What's going on, world? My name is Dean. And my name's Nikki. And you are officially tuned into the Black King, Black Queen podcast, where we explore a variety of topics, questions, and pressing thoughts. Our goal is to inspire, encourage, and educate every listener by having meaningful conversations surrounding Black love, Black excellence, and Black legacy. With every unique discussion, we unpack the good, the bad, and the ugly that most individuals will experience while on this journey called life. At the core, our message is to choose purpose over fear. We encourage every listener to let go of whatever has been holding them back and step into their individual purpose on purpose as well we express the importance of taking this step because there is always someone who could benefit from a lived experience so in the words of my husband there's an entire audience out there waiting on your yes so we challenge you to choose purpose over fear today now let's get into this episode let's get it let's go What's going on, world? You already know what time it is. It's your girl, Nikki. Your boy, D-Man. You guys are officially tuned into another episode of the BKBQ podcast where we highlight black love, black legacy, and black excellence, man. Let's get it. Let's go, baby girl, baby girl. How you feeling? How you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Tired as usual. Um, I think it's pretty normal for adults and parents to feel that way. And so I think I'm falling right in line with how I'm supposed to be feeling. Just tired, but I'm still pushing. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Tired as well. Still pushing, man. We still fighting. We still thriving. Man, still in a whole bunch of mess, but you know, by God's grace, we trust that he's going to get us up on out of it, man. So, you know, still here, still believing all that good stuff, man. We actually had something that we wanted to talk about on the podcast today because uh, something happened in the week and something's been happening. And we wanted to kind of dive into that. In regards to our two baby girls, you want to tell them what that is? All right. So, well, this past weekend, I went to a women's conference, I should say. And at this conference, one of the speakers, she was talking about the fact that. Thanks. She's talking about the fact that um, growing up, she never really felt beautiful because nobody ever really used those words when speaking to her. But she would always hear people complimenting her sister and saying her sister is beautiful and pretty and cute. But in her mind, she's like, we both look identical. But the only thing that kind of separated us was that she was far lighter skinned than. no. Well, her sister was far lighter skinned than she was. And so she realized that. It's not that she wasn't pretty, but people were associating the prettiness with the lighter skinned version of her or her sister. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. So it kind of bothered her even up until her adult life. And so it kind of hit me because I noticed those kinds of tendencies with our two daughters. Like I would notice if we go somewhere, people would compliment Harmony and be like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Also because she has really light eyes. So she would get a lot of those compliments and you can see on Melody's face, she's processing the fact that nobody's saying anything to her. People say it, but not as often. And so it kind of triggered me a little bit because I was like, this is something that is much bigger than this moment right here. If it translated into this adult woman's life as that, I don't want this to be something to translate in Melody's life to such an old age, if that makes sense. Yeah, and don't get it twisted, man. Like, guys, Melody has the utmost confidence in the world. Like, she's so confident, but um, she also notices things. Like, and as young as she is, she's three years old. She turns four in the next couple months. Like, one thing I do is make sure I tell her that she's beautiful every single day. I probably say maybe about... 25 to 30 times mm-hmm. a day. Like I tell her she's beautiful. I tell her that I love her. Both of them, both of my daughters. Right. But what happens is, um, harmony. So harmony's our younger daughter. She got like eyes to kill. Like her eyes mm-hmm. are like, they, they, it's like it changes one day. It's hazel. The next day might be a little gray greenish or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, Melody notices that. So when we go out, the first thing that people see is harmony's eyes. So they're going to say, Oh my God, her eyes are so beautiful. All that stuff. And then they obviously, you know, compliment her as well but it's the eyes that gets them so um melody came up to me the other day she was just like daddy our eyes are brown but harmony's eyes are green why her eyes green everybody says her eyes are so she's noticing these mm-hmm. things right now so you just gotta explain to her like yeah some people got different color eyes but the thing that's you know that sticks is that we're all beautiful you're beautiful because you got beautiful dark brown eyes so we make sure we tell her that you got beautiful dark brown eyes girl like girl don't let nobody tell you nothing like your <laughs> eyes are beautiful and like yeah so even today i was just like Who's the most beautiful girl in the world? And she was like, me, 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 me. I do it to both of them, but it's like, now I'm noticing I got to 
give that extra mm-hmm. push to like you know melody because she's very she she notices a lot so if she sees someone compliment her sister she's gonna be like you didn't say it to me and you actually and told me that she <laughs> like, literally says those exact words like we were at the park and somebody from afar was like oh my gosh she's so cute and immediately melody turned to me and she was like how come she didn't say it to me like she didn't say i was cute i was like she did like you just didn't hear her which she didn't but like you are cute. You are beautiful. So I, I think it really triggered me a lot to hear, like I said, an adult saying she felt this way even up until her adulthood. You know what I mean? And so I never want Melody to feel that way. And I don't want any children to feel that way. And so just kind of be mindful of the things that you say to your children and the things that happen around your children and the mm-hmm. conversations that happen because they hold on to those things and they remember those things. And you don't want them to be sad growing up and having those things in the back of their their minds you know i am love i am, love. I am confident I am confident. and i was made with divine purpose, I was made with divine purpose. Everything, I desire, I everything i desire i attract i overcome my fears by following my biggest dream i am more than enough i have the power to be the difference and create the change i want to see i am the head and not the tail Above and not beneath, a lender and not a borrower, a winner and not a quitter. My failures will never define me, because I will rise above and be everything I was created to be. My black is proud, my black is strong, my black is beautiful, my black is excellent. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Black king, black queen on three. One, two, three. Black king, black queen. Get it. I remember you said that um, someone told you to correct, make the correction in front of your child's right. face. Like, so talk about that. And so a couple of days after the women's conference, I was on Instagram scrolling and I saw this parent say, um, it's always important to make sure that you Um, make a correction to somebody who makes a comment to your child in front of your child. And so the example was a parent was with her child and they went out and somebody said, oh my gosh, your daughter's so shy. She didn't say hi to me. She's so shy. She's going to grow up and be antisocial. And she said she saw her daughter's face like change. Like, what is she even saying? Like, what are these words that this woman is saying? And so the mother obviously felt away. And so she responded. She's like, she's not shy. What it is, is that she doesn't trust easily because we've taught her to not trust Mm -hmm. people easily. You know what I mean? Like if they're a stranger, they're a stranger. And so she was like, but what she's doing in this moment is evaluating and assessing whether she is able to trust you. You know what I mean? And so because of how you're reacting right now, she's not going to trust you and you can't expect her to say hi to you or feel comfortable around you because of the way you reacted. And so she said she noticed when she clapped back at this woman that her child was kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's that's my mom right on. And I also <laughs> noticed like too when we dropped Mel to daycare, yeah. if something's going on between her and her yo, little she's kid friends, she <laughs> says she's like, you tell them, yep. you tell them what whatever the situation, whatever it is she wants us to tell them. She wants us to be the first one to say it, and, and the, then she'll say, something. and then she'll mm-hmm. say something because, and also that mother, she said. The ch- your child trusts your opinions most. So yes, they will learn things from other people and they'll hear things from other people, but your word matters most. So be mindful of the things that you say, be mindful of how you protect them and just always like keep that in mind because they need that. They need that from you especially. And so for anyone out there who says hi to my kids and they don't say hi to you, don't be offended. They just don't trust you in that moment understand that understand that as parents we tell our kids don't speak to strangers don't talk to strangers don't hug strangers don't sit on strangers laps all of these things we're telling them that so if you try to talk to them and they're crying leave them alone yeah some people try you're making it awkward some people try to be like yeah they're crying don't worry she's okay like no she's not okay she doesn't want to be with you leave her doesn't want to be right now it's okay like and you know i'll take them away from them immediately like <laughs> hey it, it it is what it is but yeah and it's funny because sometimes they'll they'll do things at home and you will be like yo you're not shy so the mistake that i make sometimes is they'll say hi and all that stuff whenever at home they're friendly whatever they go on the road 
and someone says hi and they're like they don't want to say hi I'm like yo come on man you say hi yeah. all the time like come on just do it just do it just do it you do it and they don't do it because they probably don't feel safe enough around that person to do that but you know what's crazy as soon as the person walks away you're gonna get the bye bye <laughs> like, well, because they feel safe with us but in the presence of them it might not feel like that so what I'm actually gonna do is stop doing that see I just learned something right now that's mm-hmm. crazy because what I do like I know I do this yeah. I, just, I see myself yeah. doing it right now is go on say hi but they're saying hi to you come on don't be shy don't be shy mm-hmm. you're not this shy you're not that shy but they just don't feel comfortable thank you like they don't feel comfortable. I'm actually gonna take that and apply it because I just caught myself I literally do that and it's not creating a safe environment where children who feel that safe, like feel safe, the maids just don't feel safe, and that's all right. So we're gonna talk about something, but I want to go into something else. Like, I also right had now. another like, thing to add. Right, to so that too. I want to go into something else. So, <laughs> so we're talking about kids and um, our children, how they trust people. We teach them not to say hi to strangers and not to do this and not to do that. So some of us may have friends that are you know the people that come around and go around, whatever, come in, come out, and um. They want our children to refer to them as uncle, auntie, whatever, all that good stuff. Nah, fam. Like, you're not uncle. You're not auntie. The reason why we don't want our children calling any and anybody uncle or auntie, because that puts a trust factor on that individual. Because if we don't know you that well, let's say we're <laughs> we're kicking it, like I've been knowing you for the last two, three months, that's not enough time for my child to be comfortable enough with you to look at you as an uncle or auntie because then that means that it doesn't matter what happens they trust you it's a trust factor they hold you to a high standard Mm -hmm. and they're just like you know what no because you're my uncle and you're my auntie i trust you so i can go here with you and then i say you know your kid is gone Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like what like so i'll tell you guys this if whoever's watching this if you see my kid and you say you know you're supposed to call me uncle you're supposed to call me auntie unless we establish that relationship and we say oh, it was cool. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's not happening. I won't lie. We were doing it at the start. <laughs> like when we first had our children, mm-hmm. and it was a little, some situations came. We're just like, I right, well, never again. Mm-hmm. I know you got something to say about that. That's like, literally exactly <laughs> the conversation I was going to raise. Cause I'm like, I've seen it happen and I'm instantly triggered, but instead of speaking up and protecting my child, I kind of let it just happen. But I'm, I'm done with that. So thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> I'm triggered. Don't tell my child to call you auntie. Don't tell my child to call you uncle. If we have not established that with our child for the same reason that Dean just said, like that puts a trust in you. And if something does happen between our relationship, they're still going to look to you for that. And I don't know what your intentions are. Anything can happen. Just know that children need a moment to trust you before they will be key keying with you because we're teaching them things at home, right? Right. It's, That's my two cents. It's crazy. But um, how do you think we're doing so far, like, as parents? So we've been parents for now, what, almost four years. Crap it up for, crap it up for us, like, four <laughs> years. we parents right on. And, guys, it's the best thing in the world. But because of our situation, sometimes I find myself, like, um, like taking out frustration on them so let's say like i find out you guys know our story we lost everything and like sometimes i'm like yo how are we gonna get this for them how are we gonna get that for them and they're just trying to have a great time we're just like guys stop 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 it's like i find myself like letting out anger that life is bringing (laughs) on me towards them and it's like i could do a lot better with that so we're juggling it right now. How do you think I've been doing with that? Like, okay, so for, for example, yesterday, so we're recording their first, um, their first video, right? We're yeah, starting a channel for them. A What's channel. the channel name? Tell them the channel name. Do we have it yet? We don't Who have knows? a channel <laughs> name. Who knows? But <laughs> we started recording. We started recording videos for them, right, for this channel, and um, so it was supposed to be Melody and Harmony, but uh, Harmony does she wasn't feeling it yesterday. She's right? a baby, right? She's a baby, so she was in the first, the first couple of shots, and then um. I was just like, all right, Harmony, you got to go. But she wanted to be around. So I was recording Melody, but Harmony was like hitting 
everything like <laughs> big and toys that have volume on them start singing like crazy in the video i'm just like okay harmony you gotta go you gotta get out you gotta get out go to your mommy go to your mommy she would cry 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 but i'm like i gotta record those i i don't want you to go but if you stay here we won't be able to do this thing and i know i got like maybe five minutes with melody before it gets on and popping like melody can go from zero to 10 billion like that so um the end of the video came and uh melody Got this big Kinder Surprise toy or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's not a Kinder Surprise <laughs> toy. That, she's allergic <laughs> but, to Kinder uh, uh, Surprise. Yeah, but what was that? Well, she got a big, she, uh, a a big baby prize alive. was revealed a to baby her. Alive, a baby though. alive. All right, cool. You see, I'm, 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 a, I'm a real dad out here. Too, Kinder bro. Surprise. <laughs> right? right? But, so they were supposed to open it together on camera. Harmony wasn't feeling it. So while I'm shooting Melody, I'm just like, all right, yo, Nini, you got to go. You got to go with your mom. And what did you say? Like how she felt, how she felt. She was so emotional. And I think she was crying for a number of things. I think she was tired. I think she was hungry. And she wanted to be a part in her own way. Mm -hmm. She wanted to do what she wanted to do, but not be stopped. So when she was getting pushed out of the way, like moved back so we could close the door, because her crying was getting out of hand. Like it was annoying and it was messing up the film. She started crying for her dad. She's like, daddy, daddy. Like she wanted him. So I think she felt that rejection, mm -hmm. which is very sad for a child to feel rejection, although she probably won't remember it. But in that moment, the cure she wanted was you. Yeah. But you were kind of pushing her away because you mm -hmm. were doing another task, which I think because you were trying to do that task, you were annoyed that she was doing what she was doing, mm -hmm. but she was crying. So it was like just a big circle that really couldn't have been helped because yeah. you needed her to be quiet. She wanted to be with you, but you needed to get something done. So she needed to be away from you. Yeah, but it was so sad. Like It was sad. Immediately my heart dropped. <laughs> I was just like, what? She was sad. She, she wanted me? She was <laughs> literally crying for you. Like, I'm her mom, guys, and she <laughs> loves me, but she was like, yeah. Daddy, daddy. And then we have like glass, mm -hmm. like mirrors. What, what do you call those? Yeah, windows, windows. So yeah. you can see through them, like straight to where he is. So we were on one side and she was looking at him through the other side and she just like was calling him. I'm like, it's okay. Like I'm here. And she just didn't want me. Yeah. That, <laughs> that to me made me feel sad because it's just like, all right, what do you do? So like, how do you deal with the rejection factor? Like, so I don't want, especially my daughters to get, or feel rejected from me because I mean they're gonna get rejected at some point in life, but I wanted them to know that with me, like I'm their safe space. Like, but it's hard, man. Like, especially when life is going, it gets so hard. So I gotta now tone it down and like or like be more aware of um a situation, even in the midst of doing something. How can I I gotta learn how I can be more aware of all right, what? her needs are maybe i could have stopped the video for 10 seconds and I'd just be like all right baby girl how you doing like what's wrong pick her up because i do this thing pick her up, hug daddy she hugs daddy are you okay okay i love you she i love you and i <laughs> kiss her up and then boom boom it's done maybe that's all it needed and then she could have been a part of the video right the rest of the video the ending of the video but instead i was so focused on you know getting the job done at all costs when i'm a man and then that was just a wrong call. I think you were just annoyed overall. Yeah. You said you had a headache or something. Yeah, that, like it was. Something. Yeah, it was over. Like you know when you start to get that hungry headache. Now it's just like yeah. my girl, but like that was my baby girl. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I think with our like challenge channeling our like thought process before we get to that annoyed level, it's kind of hard because again, life is so rocky. We're trying to stay happy and good for each other because if mm -hmm. we're good, we can work together to make sure that the kids are good mm -hmm. and in a happy place. Like if one of us are upset, at least the other one is fine because mm -hmm. we're not arguing so we can attend to the kid. But sometimes it's hard to get there. I don't know. They're just screaming. Mm -hmm. They're loud. It's like, yo, that's, that's the thing that you... triggers you. So, okay, let's talk about what triggers you the most. Screaming, yeah. <laughs> screaming, like the sound of it, 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 it just triggers me. And if it happens too often, I'm going to yell back. I yep. don't, I just, if I don't walk away or if I don't like disappear, I'm going to scream. And then I feel bad because I'm like, why am I screaming at you? You're literally doing what you're supposed to be doing. But I'm so just like up to here and beyond. I just can't handle it. What yeah. triggers you? What triggers me? Um, To be honest, like, I don't know. What triggers before it was the crying, like the crying mm -hmm. used to get me. Like I felt so bad for the first maybe four months of Harmony's life because I I couldn't do it 
I, 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 I had nothing left in me. So, yeah, that I'll was gi- the peak, though. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. give context because for those who are just joining in, I'll, I'll give. You, let me run you on the storyline. What happened with us? So, January thirteenth, we purchase a house. I close on a house. January twenty first, we find out we lose five hundred thousand of eight hundred thousand dollars in total. February sixteenth, Harmony is born. So, in the midst of all of that, I had the most pressure on my mind. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't do nothing. So the crying just did something. I don't even know. Like, I can't explain it. Like, if I could control it, on God, I would control it. I just couldn't control it. And I just was, like, distant. Like, oh, I can't mm-hmm. do this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. So mm-hmm. now I'm, like, all over her. Because I'm just like, man, those first four months were tough, man. <laughs> like, it was tough. But, like, yeah, it's the, it would have. It would be the crying. Now, I think I'm doing a much better job job you know I, I said i think so i gotta look at wifey like yo dog, is it like yo, am i doing a good or more better um yeah like you guys are friends now so it's not so much that i think just kids being kids mm-hmm. annoying parents is what kind of triggers yeah so the what, anger the overall like, parenting experience though right now what would you what where would you say we're at like with them like the how, overall yeah like just how are we doing like how are we balancing balancing life and parenting, like I think we're doing. To be honest, I think we're doing the best we can given our circumstances. And I'm not like, I I honestly think we are because I know if we had it, it'd be a lot different. Yeah. So like, the other day, remember the other day we were upstairs and you were just like, man, like something happened, mm-hmm. and you said, I I it's not their fault, and I feel you felt bad for something, and you're like it's not their fault, but. You know, it's just the situation that we're in right now when it will be better. Like, you don't I can't remember. remember, no. Jeez, man. Like, there, there's something hot. Like, something. You were upstairs and like, we, I feel so bad because they just, oh, because let's say like they're, they're playing around and everything and like they're playing you're, while you're trying to clean or something or do anything. They're just in the way, but it's not their fault. They just wish they had like somewhere to go play and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But the situation doesn't really have Oh, we were on the phone. Okay. Oh, we were, you were here. Oh, yeah. I was driving. Yeah. So essentially, if we were deciding that, OK, they have all their toys in the living room upstairs and it's kind of chaotic because it takes over the entire main floor of the house. So we're like, OK, let's move everything downstairs. But I was like, it sucks that we have to confine them to a smaller space because they're just kids. Kids need spaces to experience and learn through their playing and all of mm-hmm. that stuff. And then I felt bad because I was like. We're adults. We're married. We should have a house. We should have a toy, like a place for them to play and just be kids and learn and experience. They shouldn't be getting in trouble for wanting to color the walls. Granted, nobody wants anybody to color the walls, but that's what kids do. You know what I mean? So we shouldn't be getting at them like, don't color the walls. Crayons are for the paper. Don't it. Like it shouldn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. Kids should be able to be kids. But because of our situation and our living circumstances, we have to put limitations on them. And then I feel bad because I'm like, they shouldn't have to be confined mm-hmm. to that, you know? So, right. So, I, think that's I mean, what it was. yeah, I think we're doing good though. Like, cause trust me, guys, it hasn't been easy. I, I, do you think that having kids in the midst of like the chaos that's going on in the world in our lives, like kind of made it harder for our marriage? Now, now we're bringing it to the marriage side, guys. All right, clap it up for the kids. <laughs> clap it up for the kids. But um, like, like, do you think it made like our marriage harder? Okay, I'll, let me talk on me. You can think on that. I know like there's been times where, because I'm the man, right? So I'm thinking if I can't provide, for, like, I'm work, like, what am I doing? Like, so I will just be up trying to figure out how I'm going to get it. Like, how we're going to recover it all. Like, point blank, period. Meanwhile, I wasn't noticing that, man, one, staying with the kids and taking care of the kids is a lot of work. Do Nikki and cooking, doing this and all that stuff. It's like double the work. So I was just like, you know what? How can I step up in any way, shape, or form? Like, I was like, all right. So the other day, I'm like, yo, let me cook a, let me cook something, man. <laughs> I cooked a, did like a one, two shepherd's pie for her. And, you know, she loved it. Like. <laughs> and she like, no, don't play. But I'm just like, you know what? I, I even asked her, I'm like, right, what can I do to like take the take the load off of you outside of like grinding? Forget grinding. Take put working aside. Like boom. Trying to figure out what we're doing with our with our companies, all that stuff. Okay, I take that. But when it comes to being in the home, like what can I do to make it better? And now that's where we're at right now, just figuring out ways that 
know, I could lend a helping hand with all these duties. Because at the end of the day, we went into this together, yo. It took two of us to bring them girls in the world. I did the, I did the most work, though. Obviously. <laughs> like, I did the most work, obviously. What are you talking about? Not like, obviously. Yo, hardest five minutes of my life, yo. What are you saying? Yo, boom, bam, bing, bada, bam. <laughs> like, yo. Like, hardest but, five minutes. <laughs> nah, yo, but ah, uh, just like figuring figuring that out. And it's, it's it's been a journey. I'll tell you this, man. Like, what I love about us, our relationship, is that it could have gone any other way like after losing everything like we joke around all the time and we're just like yo bro like look at us still Mm -hmm. standing in this thing like and it didn't break us in any way shape or form like it actually losing everything together made us so much stronger i don't know how it makes sense like i know this would give couples or any couple out there most couples out there 10 billion reasons to split Mm -hmm. like how life happened for us but for some reason, like like the reason, same reason why I said I knew you were the one. I I couldn't picture life without you. So whether that was you know we're on the mountaintop together or we're in the mud together, both places I pictured that with you. So like when we got to the mountaintop and lost it all, it didn't matter. I only saw you. But the real question is like, why did you? Why didn't you switch up or why didn't you be like, man, I'm out of this thing, Dean? Like, no, nah, it's just not for me, man. It's just not working, bro. Like, point blank period. Because it doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? <laughs> like, it's, first of all, why would I do that? It's n- To go back into the story a little bit, it wasn't your fault mm. as to why we got in the mess. Yes, the ideas were approached to you and we took them on, but no decision was made without my consent and or me being involved. And so... I kind of feel like I had a little part to play in it Mm -hmm. too. You know what I mean? And I don't blame you for the happenings of it. And so for the rockiness that, why am I going to split up my family? Because Mm -hmm. we lost money and all the other things went left. I figure it's better to just build up a better way and Mm -hmm. be together. And to be honest, this whole journey, we learned so much, Mm -hmm. not only about each other, not only about parenting, but about life and like, you made a couple of like declarations like I want to meet new people. I want to get into different communities. And that has been happening like crazy this year mm-hmm. for you. You know what I mean? So a lot of good, despite all of the crazy that is probably still happening, a lot of good is coming out of it and has come out of it. So I'm grateful for that. You all know? Right, that guy, I love it. What's one thing you would um tell couples that are going through hardships that have children? Like well, what's one word of advice that you would tell them? One word of advice would be to the couple. Ooh, it's tough. No kidding. Um, Seems very cliche, but keep an open communication with you and your partner. As long as you two are good, Mm -hmm. everything else will fall underneath that. And I don't think I really understood that until we kind of got into this mess. Because in my brain, I'm always just like, well, I got to get the kids ready. I got to do this for the kids. I got to do this for the kids. But at the same time, I married you. So I have to make sure that you're good so that we could be good so that the kids will be good so that everything will work together. As long as we're talking, as long as we're making sure that we're there for each other, everything else will pan itself out. Keep that open communication. If you're having trouble, talk about it. If you're feeling a certain way, talk about it. I'm not a big talker, but talking does help a lot. So my thing would be keep that open communication Make sure that it's on point, even if you feel like it's repetitive, even if you feel like it's going to make things worse, talk about it because clear, open communication will make it all better. As yeah. cliche as it sounds. Yeah, and that's facts, man. And even for us, like we've just been just open to learning and growing. Like so we we understand that in every season might require a different version of you. And we just dedicated, all right, well, if you're going to grow this way, well, I got to grow too. Like right now, Nikki's in a phase where she's just like, all right, I'm trying to figure out myself. Like her, she's trying to figure out herself. So I'm just like, all right, yo, well, whatever that looks like, how could we, how could I help? Like, yeah. um, like we're on, we're ele- elevating together. And I think that's important because where a lot of people die out is they don't think that this marriage thing is a journey like they don't think changes will happen you are going to change you're going to evolve <laughs> the the thing is you got to evolve and grow and change together mm-hmm. like right you got to be in it together um like and i wouldn't 
Trade it for the world. Like I'm in it with my best friend and I always, it always goes back to my why. And like, I know this person is the woman of my dreams. I know she is the one for me. So if I know that to be true, what can I do to make this work? Because like the thing is, because I know me and her being together and building and growing legacy, this marriage thing is, I know it to be true. Nothing can come in between that for right. me. So now it's like, all right, so what do I have to do to be better? I look within me. Like if we mess up, I, I, I'm tough headed sometimes, most times. Mm-hmm. But when I mess up, it's like, all right, yo, bet. I'll come back home and be like, all right, yo, it was a me thing. That's not happening again. And I work on me. Like, how can I be better? But she said something that's profound. If I'm focused about being a better person for her and she's focused on, focused on being a better person for me, I will always be good will always be good because this thing is selfless man and it's it's a journey and it's a learning process but you have to continually be growing and developing together Mm -hmm. because if you're not doing it together it's a wrap man so um yeah i'm happy to be on the journey with my wifey man we came out here to talk about uh 10 things you should know before getting married (laughs) yeah we didn't list one because i was like it's just a raw organic conversation hope you guys enjoyed it though man but you guys already know my model if they're ah wow i messed up (laughs) you already know my model man there's an entire audience out there waiting on your yes so i'm challenging you and everybody under the sound of my voice today to choose purpose over fear man i'm depending on you nikki's depending on you the whole entire world is depending on you so trust and believe in yourself because you got it you got everything inside of you to be the person that god created you to be so trust god and watch him work it out for your favorite you already know what time it is man it's your boy dean and your girl nikki oh we all peace